Hey, what's up, y'all? This is the Mother's House Podcast, and uh, I am Deshaun. What's going on, family? This is Corey in the building. What's happening? What's up with my cousin? What's up, cuz? Uh, chilling. What's up with you? Man, you know, just maintaining, trying to maintain. You I know? hear you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I hear you. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, um, so just session, see? Yeah, acting up, just like Donald Trump, act up every other week, huh? Right. Um, so uh, I'll read what exactly what he said. This is right. coming from Jeff Sessions, and he told the National Sheriff's Association this. He was speaking to the National Sheriff's Association. He said, I want to thank every sheriff in America. Since our founding, the independently elected sheriff has been the people's protector who keeps law enforcement close to and accountable to people through the elected process. Sessions said in remarks at the National Sheriff's Association winter meeting, adding, oh God, (laughs) I swear I I usually read better than this. See, this is what it is. I'm like reading sideways. So, oh goodness, why are you tweeting Because I got how I got the phone lined up with the mic, but okay. But here's the controversial part, y'all. So here, here to go to kicker right here. This is what Session said. He said the Anglo American heritage of law enforcement. We must never erode this historic office. So yeah. You know, that's the cold speech. That's the as uh, hate hate to bring this brother name up. But um, Tariq Nasheed will say that's white men speak white white supremacists speaking in code. You know, um, I think that's like you know he just strumming the horns for you know more black more tyranny on black folks. You dig know what I'm saying? More more police harassment, more police you know patrolling and and and, and hunkering down on black folks. I think that's what he's kind of ringing on. And he's talking about the history. And this, mind you, this is Black History Month. <laughs> so let me take y'all back to the history. The, the, and, and also, the, to framework this, is very disrespectful to the black sheriffs who's out there, Mexican, Latino, other ethnic groups that's in the sheriff's department. It's very disrespectful to only highlight and try to show honor only to the Anglo-Saxon because he's speaking in code. He ain't necessarily Anglo Saxon. He ain't necessarily say European. He just ain't English speaking, but we know what he's talking about. Okay. So, um. White folks. Oh. Were you about to go back in history and say something? Right. Okay, so, go ahead. You know, the Sheriff's Department, the law enforcement in, in, in a nutshell, that's the thing this country tried to prize itself off of law enforcement. And law enforcement, you go back towards. Antebellum South, that to slavery, that to uh, the 18, 17, 1600s, 1800s more so, in the 1700s, they, they put in laws to try to create, you know, where the police officers or the law enforcement was to maintain property, and property was black folks. And in maintaining, if you run away to New York, they will come up to New York, capture you, and bring you right back down into slavery. If they conceive you are property. <clears throat> and sometimes, most times, you will be have free papers, they'll still arrest you and throw you right into slavery. That transcends into the Jim Crow, that transcends into what we see now, mass incarceration. For him to speak like that is also dis- disparaging because you know, we we dealing with mass incarceration, black men and women and um, mostly black men, mostly black and brown men are being incarcerated at a high levels. You know what I'm saying? We are more more incarcerated than we were enslaved. More people in in prison than there were slaves. You know what I'm saying? That's another form of slavery. Right. Okay. So the horn on that. So let me play devil's advocate real quick. Right. Okay. Go ahead. You know you about to piss some damn listeners off. It's fine. And because it might really be an educational moment. So right. So the word Anglo does not mean white or KKK. Let me give you a little bit of history on the word Anglo. Right, right. Okay. I'm reading from the National Review, by the way. So y'all take that how y'all want to take it. Y'all, for the people who know what the National Review is. Um, 
But it, the word Anglo is used to, re to refer to those institutions, ideals, structures, and customs that are common to England and the United States. Basically, it means common law, but it can also apply more broadly. There is, for example, an, an identifiable Anglo-American conception of due process, which is distinct from... Um, a Napoleon, Napoleonic system, a Napoleonic system. So what they're saying is Anglo, like they say most lawyers know what the word Anglo-American means. It's like describing almost like how the Europe, how the United States is using a system that's similar to Europe and been using the same system for like years and years and years. They call that Anglo-American. So like our law system is like Anglo-American. So lawyers kind of know how to throw that word around. That's like law talk, law rhetoric. And um, they also say other presidents use the word Anglo. They say they have a couple of um, a couple of paragraphs where they have something from Obama saying Anglo. He said it a couple of times too. It's cold talk. He talking about white folks too. He talking that same speech. He know how to stay on cold. It's the thing. The system, this country, this foundation of this country is built for white Protestant males. That I do not um, disagree with at all. <laughs> so, when he's saying Anglo, he's not speaking to, or speaking up for, or speaking about American as a whole. If he did want to say that, he could just say Sheriff Department, black, the men and women in the Sheriff Department. He could have said a whole bunch of different things. He's not speaking on that sin. Mind you, um, the sister, the great ancestor, the ancestor now, um, Coretta Scott King had warned us about. She did. Justice. She said, and his racist rhetoric. Go ahead, she, tell, them, tell them what she said. It was a letter that was uh, back in 1986. That's the year I was born. So that long ago, when uh, Jeff Sessions was up running for something, I think he was running for like a federal judge position. And she said to put him in that position would like be basically rolling back all the work that her husband had done. So she didn't agree with him. She thought he was racist and she just thought it was a really horrible move. But um, and I also want to read one more insert from Obama. Another thing he said. Well, no. Did I read one thing he said? You ain't read nothing from Obama. I, okay, so let me read something from Obama. Mm -hmm. So Obama said, this is him in 2006 arguing in favor of the habeas corpus on the Senate floor. Who are these legal terms is wearing me out? Well, okay. The world is watching what we do today in America. They will know what we do here today and they will treat us all accordingly in the future our soldiers our diplomats our journalists anybody who travels beyond these borders i hope we remember this as we go forward i sincerely hope we can protect what has been called the great writ a writ that has been in place in the anglo-american legal system for over 700 years so let's double back let's double back common law common law it was common law that you know the sundown laws was common law <clears throat> Jim Crow, separate but equal, was common law. Common law, stop and frisk, is common law. Common law is 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 pretty much is the same thing that really harms and and and, and um incarcerate a lot of us on bogus charges. That's why we got so many brothers and sisters in jail on nonviolent charges. Common law. And, 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 and Anglo Saxon law has always been in the profit and in the protection of the property of America. And granted, not just black people, but everybody is a property of America. We all some type of statistics, some type of numbers. It's a numbers game. It's all about financials, it's all about the bottom line. Ever since its inception, it's always been like that. The problem is. When we look into the into the, the the details about okay the wording and this and that, yeah, we have to look beyond that to the point where we understand what's really being said and what type of moves are they making. I think Donald Trump has already passed uh, 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 some kind of law, tax laws, 
but it's a breach of law he passed last year or tried to pass last year where more um, um, putting more more money into private prisons, putting more money into into um, incarcerating more folks <clears throat> instead of rehabilitating people. And the only type of rehabilitation they're talking about is towards you know white men, white people who are getting crack, hit, hit down by opioids. Even that is a, a, a ploy to placate on money and financial gains, anglo saxon law, common law, all these different things. But when Jeff Sessions is saying anglo saxon heritage, we gotta respect that and honor that. He said Anglo American. Anglo American. Anglo American. He's talking about white folks when he's saying Anglo American. He's not speaking to everyday people in America. If he wanted to say that, he would just say American. You dig what I'm saying? So this is all a, 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 a tech. He's basically, t- this is the thing. They getting very blunt. We're trying to flip, trick you up, trip, trip a lot of people up. Because a lot of people don't know these terminologies. They don't understand these terminologies. They just see Anglo and play. like, oh, let me do the research on this thing. Oh, that don't sound like he's talking about this white folks. That sound like he's talking about this and this and that. No, he's talking about white people. He's talking about white police officers. He's talking about white sheriff's department, which is very disrespectful to the black sheriff's departments or, or black people who are sheriffs or black men and women who are sheriffs. You okay. know what I'm saying? This is how I feel. Okay, this is how I feel. So, I, I feel like... I think that word Anglo-American, I think it's a word that's been used already, but I think just because Jeff Session is using it, it's getting a little bit more attention. And I feel like when he used it, I don't think he's talking about white people. I think he's talking about a white system, which I which I still, you know, I get systematic racism and everything. But and I think that's why Obama kind of used it. And Jeff said, I think it's a word that's used in legal stuff, period. Um, so I don't think it's really about, so I don't, if it were, if there were black officers in the room, I don't think it would have been disrespectful because he's describing the system that they work for. They work for a Anglo American system, which is the European American system, which is, is what it is. I think it's a systematically racist system, but I mean, if you're a police officer, you already know that you, you signed up for that. So I don't think it was disrespectful to them, but I will say this. I mean, the system is racist. Like that's just what it is. Like that's what it is. Right. It so is is. whenever you talk about the system, you can't help but say it's racist. Even if, even if Jeff Sessions, even if he honestly was being, you know, not trying to be controversial, they did say he put that Anglo American word in there. Though they say he wasn't supposed to say that. He kind of went off the record and said that. But even if he was being not controversial, just trying to be, you know, say some regular old stuff and not try to get on nobody's nerves. The fact that you're mentioning the system, period, because the system has been racist and has been built to work against black people and people on the bottom and to serve the people on the top, more so white men, you know, it's just that it just is what it is. It's like when you mention in the sky. You don't have to say that it's blue, but the sky is blue. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it kind of right. is what it is. So that's how I feel. If that mean, makes it sense. Is what it is. It's more so about the system than the, him. The more so about the system. But when he say Anglo-American, he talking about white sheriff's department. White sheriff's men. White sheriff's women. You know, when he say Anglo-American, because that's American is the people. He ain't talking about the system. He said we need to honor what, what exactly these words. Let me see. Let me you need to honor Anglo Americans heritage. Yeah, and heritage. When you honor somebody heritage, you got to honor a people heritage. And you talking about Anglo white American heritage? That's what he's talking about. He's talking. To, he's speaking in code, brother. That's that's what he's doing. I don't that's, think that's he's what, speaking in code. I think. Well, he actually, not, actually, honestly, yeah. he's not. Speaking yeah, I don't think exactly what he's saying. But if you if you think he's speaking, I don't think he's speaking any more cold than any other politician would speak. I'll say that because law is cold. Thing, law is a language all by itself. Up, when you brought up one, when you brought up uh, Obama, mm-hmm. like he said the same thing. I, I was one. I was like, I'm kind of confused. I'm like, we're talking about Judge session while we're talking about Obama. But I understand why you brought Obama to show that you know. Other politicians, even black politicians, have said the same 
word. It ain't necessary about the word. It's about the energy, the rhetoric, and the push that's coming behind this man. Policies coming behind this man's, uh, or, you know, behind this cabinet. I mean, it's, it's not just him, it's the whole cabinet. You know what I'm saying? But that's also, been, it's already been in place. That right, day. That's and that's how I that's how I feel, too. And like, I get Trump and Jeff Sessions and, you know, racist, white, so, but I just feel like it's the system. It's been, like, I think people are just paying closer attention this time around because the friendly people aren't in the cabinet anymore. So it's now you see the monsters for who they are before it was monsters with, you know, nice mask on. Now you see the monsters for who they are and they're not hiding and like trying to be as discreet as they were in the beginning. And then the media is playing on it too and making it seem like they're making things seem bigger than what they actually are. And they're making you focus on things that you really shouldn't really focus on. And well, I think we should focus on this. Well, I don't think we should focus on this word because it's the word that's been used already. No, 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 no. That's the thing. I don't think that's what pissing people off about the word. I think the part what pissing people off is he basically saying, all right, we, we want to honor you. You go do your job. Block these black bastards up. That's the energy he's pushing. That's the message he's pushing. That's the, the, the rhetoric that they're pushing. They're not pushing... Um, you're not pushing, oh, we just having a stress br- briefing and we just want to show love. It's, it's, it's bigger than that. And that. That's why I call it cold talking. You know what I'm saying? That's why I call it, it's, it's, it's a coded word of language. You know what I'm saying? And that, all politicians do it. Lawyers do it. All of them do it. Right. In this, in this system. Like law is a language by itself. And what I'm saying is, whatever it is, it's the same code that's been used, like, Yes, yes, for all politicians. So I just, I don't feel like it's any worse than what any of the rest of them say. Like, like I always say, like it's the whole system. You can get mad at this politician, that politician. Don't get me wrong; some might be better than others, but for the most part, especially when they're that high, they do certain things to appease certain people. And let me right. tell you, those people ain't me and you, and probably most of the people listen to this podcast. No, 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 no. They, they're not even worried about us. They're not even worried about this little podcast. You know what I'm saying? If they do, we are in trouble. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> Ooh, we but, big now. We on Zach, you know, Jeff Sessions' radar. Yeah, I don't be on that radar just yet. Unless I got back up. You know, but at the same time, you know, this is the reason why we have to pay attention to politics. We have to pay attention to what's going on in politics. We have to pay attention to what's going on on, on, on the political scene because these, these these languages turn into policy. These policies affect the real people like uh, Trayvon Martin, whose birthday has just passed, and they just did a celebration. Shout out to Trayvon Martin, mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? Where Stand Your Ground Law was pushed. Um... All the way down um, to 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 uh, what happened to Sandra Bland and her her unlawful death. You know what I'm saying? Or unjust death that nobody can figure out, or they claim they can't figure out what happened. To what happened to um, the brother in Valdosta? What his name? Um, Kendrick yeah, Johnson. Yeah, Kendrick Johnson. You know, and what his parents going through. Even to this young boy who just died to, down here in Savannah. We all suffering, man. I know. Um, we 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 can't we can't be dismissive uh, of him making this 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 reckless rhetoric. But it's not really reckless. I think he meant to say what he wanted to say. He said what he wanted to say. He even went off the script to say what he wanted to say. I don't think it's reckless because it's been said before. It's not even reckless. That's what I'm yeah. saying. It's not even reckless. Um, because I was trying to find another word, reckless. But you know. Regular, regular. You know what I'm saying? It's real regular, but at the same time, um, I think that now the fact that we are more, you know, focused on it, we were looking more into it. You know what I'm saying? We, we. How do you combat that? How do you combat police tyranny? Um, and only best way to do that is, you know, you have stand up police officers, but we all know how that falls. You know what I'm saying? We we know how those things fall. And, you know, just, just go right back to the whole bail bonds situation. Are they racketeering money up on black bodies, brown bodies? 
on uh, all different avenues of issues that 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 plays not only the black community but the the, the community in the whole in across this country. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of people are protesting. A lot of people are speaking out. A lot of people are are up in arms. That's why you see so many hashtags. The only problem I have with some of these movements, it seems short-lived. It seems just a lot of yelling and not enough movement. You know what I'm saying? Not enough um, boots to the ground, you know, really in the face. But then again, I'm not out there. People are probably really is out there doing right. work. There's doing some work, activists out know? there. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Really out there doing the work. You know, I love what Michelle Alexander had to say on these topics. I love to see how Ava Duvernay that came after the president when he was making statements uh, about, uh, he just did a, re- a recent statement about, uh, it wasn't, he ain't said nothing about Central Park 5, but it made everybody look back at Central Park 5 and how he was like saying, um, I think he was speaking on to the Me Too movement and how, you know, accusing somebody um, without having all the facts and, you know, um, if, 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 if it destroyed lives, it's destroyed careers, it's destroyed this, well, she was like, well, what about Central Park 5? You accuse these young, innocent men, lock them up for years, you know what I'm saying, pushing for the death penalty against these men, you know what I'm saying, but you don't have that same energy towards these men who are sexual deviants. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, man, it's a pattern. It's a it's a it's a rotation. It's basically a, a, a rallying cry for the last stand for these uh, men in office or these men in power, quote unquote. You know, it's like they 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 just ruffling up the more 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 their base to push against you know marginalized and disenfranchised people. Mm, that's what's up. Yeah. But, but um, um Yo, y'all let us know how this statement what Jeff Sesson had to say. You know, if the if this really rough y'all up, <clears throat> let us know. Um or put us on game. Maybe we're off our market. Mark, maybe y'all can put us on game, you know, brothers and sisters. Let's and also let's build on okay, they saying this, they doing this, they moving like this, how do we move? You know what I'm saying? How do we protect each other? How do we protect our families, protect our brothers, our sisters, and everyone, even the people who's out there on the ground fighting, you know, fighting to bring, you know, uh, equal justice for all brothers and all black men and brown people. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we just build from there. But um, you got any last words to us? Uh, I wonder if there would have been uproar had he not used the term Anglo-American, because that's what caught my eye. But um, yeah, what the people think? What y'all think? If he wouldn't have said Anglo-American, do you think everybody would have been acting crazy? Yeah. All right, we'll catch y'all next time, man. We're going to catch y'all up probably again tomorrow. Thank y'all for listening. Peace to the family. Well, love. I will not raise my daughter differently than my mother raised me. The rearing I got from my mother, words cannot express. I could live in any time, I could live in any country, I could live on any planet, and I would be fine. What was the key? The key. What did your mother know? <sighs> what truth was coming through your mother that's mm-hmm. going to come through you to your daughter? My mother gave us aphorisms to learn as children. And the one that I, there are two that stand out foremost in my mind. One is, the inner reality creates the outer form. I learned this when I was in grade school. I was very young. And the other is, the universe bears no ill to me. I bear no ill to it.